I thought I'll do a <laughs> quick baking show for us as well. Uh, but my charge ran out. I need my ingredients and I need my recipe. Uh, why does this microwave oven plug have three pins and this charger brick of mine, mobile brick, has just two pins? Isn't that fascinating? Well, let's actually see what happens when I put these pins into the power socket. Now the socket is actually connected to the main power supply, right? Neutral wire and the live wire. Now, these wires, neutral and live, are at a potential difference of about 220 volts. Well, of course, if you're in India. The current flows from a higher potential to a lower potential. So when an appliance like an oven is plugged in, the electric current flows. It enters the appliance through the live wire, then goes into all of the multiple components and the circuitry inside of that particular appliance, and then leaves and exits out through the neutral wire and goes and completes the circuit. Things, unfortunately, don't always work as they are meant to work. Sometimes, due to maybe faulty connections or some defects in the components, you know, an unwanted current that flows through like the casing of the appliance or so, right? How? Look at that wire. One of those wires which is inside of the circuitry has come loose and therefore has disconnected the circuit. Now, if the wire is touching the casing of the appliance, look at this. Current actually leaks into the casing of the appliance. Now, there is a high chance that the casing is also now conducting. Of course, if it is made up of metal or so, a conducting material, if someone accidentally touches it, then the current gets an alternate path to flow through the person into the ground. But wait a second, why the ground? Well, that's because the ground is at zero potential, right? Now, such a current that's flowing through the live wire to the casing through the human being is known as a fault current. Now, this fault current, when it flows through the human being, of course, electric shock. Now, to ensure our safety by connecting the casing to the third pin. Ah, the third pin. When inserted into the socket, connects the appliance with the earth wire or the ground wire. Now, this wire is directly connected to a plate that's usually buried under the ground outside the house. Now, the current prefers the easier pathway through the earth wire as against the human body because we say it has lesser resistance than the human body. Thanks to the third pin, any fault current that might be there in the appliance would flow directly through the earth wire to the ground without passing through the human body. But then, why don't some appliances like my tablet out here or that brick out there have a third pin? Well, look at that. No current can flow through that casing. These appliances are generally made up of insulated casings or casings made of material like plastic. They are designed such that the wires from the internal circuitry cannot touch the casing and cause faulty current. So now you know where and why this third pin is important. But check this out. The third pin, do you notice? It's actually longer and thicker than the other two pins. Why do you suppose that is? You leave that answer down in the comments below. And for more such videos, and of course, for conceptual clarity with all things maths and science and everything to do with learning, download Baiju's The Learning App.